Hey, what's up guys? Uh, my name is Max. I'm an ex ESA, ex CERN electronics engineer. Um, and today I'd like to talk to you about uh, top five tips I have for succeeding in an engineering job interview. So, tip one is the application process. Obviously, most application processes are uh, get a CV and get a cover letter ready. So, I would say, obviously, CV, no more than two pages long unless you've got at least three maybe four years experience, you could then venture out maybe into three pages, but keep it brief, two pages long. Uh, this is my CV here, you guys probably can't see it, but um, it's about three, two, uh, two and a half pages at the moment. Um, important things to have, obviously, your name. Are you a uh, accredited, are you a member of, for example, uh, the IET? So I'm a member of the MIET, uh, of the, sorry, I'm a member of the IET. Um, so I've put that right at the top that uh, I have a Master of Engineering, so obviously important, and um, I'm a member of the IET, so I don't yet hold a uh, chartership status or anything like that, but I am a member, and that's something that I would like the um, employer or future employer to know, so that's what I put there. Um, put your location, that's obviously quite important, and then, of course, along the top, I've got three links. One of them's my phone number. You want to make it nice and easy for them to contact you, to easily call you, get hold of you, you know, speak with you right away, because it's a very quick... Uh, process usually they're looking for an engineer now they don't want to wait around um, my email for the same reason and of course these are all links so I've written mine in uh, LaTeX that's a sort of a the alternative to using a word processor like Microsoft Word but either or is fine um, but just make sure that they're linked so I can click on this and open up um, a new email with my email address as a mail to link and then finally my LinkedIn profile so this is something I really encourage put your LinkedIn profile on there um, even refer to it in the text, that's what I've done down here under, I have a section called achievements, that's actually almost right at the top of my CV, um, and it says to publish articles in engineering journals, see LinkedIn profile for more details. So it's okay to link to your profile, um, I know CVs tend to have to be quite short and you really can't get as much information on there as you would like, so best thing to do, link to your LinkedIn profile, if they do want to look at it, they can, and you can have it as big, as long as you like, with as much detail as you like, on LinkedIn, so that's a really uh, top tip for you there. Moving on, I've got my profile, um, so that's just a little bit about me, achievements, and then straight into relevant experience. So um, put it in, uh, what is it, uh, chronological order, so you want um, your most relevant experience right at the top. Um, put any dates of when you were working there, how long till, whether you're still working there, etc. Um, and then a few bullet points about what you, you did there, what was your job function, why is the job that you're applying for now, um, like why is the previous experience you had relevant to the job that you're applying for now. So I've got that for all the places that I've worked. I've got a skills section, so really outline any of the skills that you think are going to be important, such as programming, that's quite, quite an important thing nowadays in electronic engineering. Um, PCB design, list all the softwares that you've used, this would help if they've got like a, a um, preliminary algorithm that just scrapes your CV and checks for X amount of buzzwords, so that's quite common for places like BAE or any large company. Uh, I think that they have a piece of software that basically scans your CV and if you don't have at least five of the words that they're looking for, be that innovation or PCB design or something like this, then I think your CV just doesn't even get to see any human eyes. So that's one, one big thing. Definitely try and put some buzzwords in there. Check out their website, see if you can find any buzzwords. Uh, they often have similar wording that they like on their websites. Um, so yeah, have your skills there. So I've got programming and engineering, uh, programming and, and um, engineering skills, and then also I've split that out to volunteering, volunteering and leadership skills. So that's quite important, I think, because nowadays they're looking for a well-rounded engineer. They want you, to, they want to be able to see that you've got some people skills as well. So outline any experiences that you have. Um, for example, I've written that at some point I was a project manager for something and uh, an outreach ambassador as well at my university. Um, then that leads on quite nicely to my education, so I speak about the my degree, what I did there, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Any honours and awards that you might have, so maybe you got um, I don't know, some award for best programmer in one of your classes or something like that. Definitely put that on there. Any certifications that you might have, so if you've done an MVQ or maybe you've got a programming certification or something like this, put that in there. Um, and your extracurricular activities and interests. So this is quite important because they do want to be able to see that you're not just an engineer, you've got some other um, things that make you 
human pretty much because you're going to be working in a workplace, you're going to be in speaking and interacting with other people. They want to make sure that you're personable pretty much. So that's the CV. That's my, my first, first point. Second point, now moving on to the actual interview. So let's say that they've looked at your CV um, and they've invited you to an interview. First things you want to do before you attend the interview is go straight to their website, uh, look at the about section, look at the, um, you know, any of their projects that they've got going on at the moment. You really need to be able to sort of say in a few words what the company is about because you can guarantee that one of their questions is going to be, um, what do you know about our company? So. Um, I've worked for a company previously, and if you couldn't tell them one fact about the company, you didn't make it to the next stage. Irrelevant how good an engineer you are, it proves that you don't really care for the company if you're doing that. So that's one one top tip there. Um, what else is there? I think, obviously, when you're at the interview, you need to, you need to dress appropriately. So for guys, that's kind of easy. That's a suit for for the ladies out there. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe you know, just sort of smart smart clothes. Whatever you guys would wear, I'm not really too sure. Um, but yeah, for the guys, suit, tie. Um, there's always this debate about whether an engineer should wear a tie or not. I've always gone for the tie. Don't know if that's a good thing, but I've always gone for the tie. Um, now, moving on to the interview. Generally, they all have the same structure. That is, you probably will speak with a HR coordinator at some point. Um, they're going to want to sort of probe and feel around how you are as a person, whether you're going to integrate well with a team, are you going to be disruptive, like, you know, so really my advice for you there is be polite, um, you know, uh, if if you're speaking to the lady at the front desk or the man at the front desk uh, of reception and, um, you know, you're not being particularly nice to them, then they're certainly going to relay that back. Quite common in um, interviews is, uh, let's say that you go downstairs and you speak, you go downstairs, you speak with a guy on the reception desk and uh, you're not particularly nice to him, you know, you sort of snap at him or something like this. Um, it's quite common that they'll go down and they'll speak with those people afterwards to see how you really are. So that's really still part of the interview process. I've worked at companies where they'll take you, um, whilst you're sort of walking around and, you know, you're seeing people during the interview, they might just sit you with someone for a moment because they need to run off and go quickly make a phone call that's just popped up. And um, really that's all staged and the guy there, he's going to be talking to you, he's going to be sort of like, seeing if he thinks that you're going to fit into the the environment. Um, so that's another quite big thing. Um, basically, the entire process is an interview. Don't don't think that uh, your interview is only once you go into the room with someone and you speak, you speak with them for a few minutes. It's kind of the whole process. Um, so yeah, they, they, they follow this general process, which is sort of speak with the HR people, uh, then it moves on to some, more, some sort of a more technical interview, so you might have a few questions. Um, so really, before you go, check out Glassdoor. Uh, it's a brilliant website. Quite often people put their interview questions on there, so you can go through uh, and try and figure out what questions you may be asked. So for example, I've had questions completely not pertaining to electronics in these interviews before, because they wanted to know your logical um, sort of thought process and your problem solving skills. So for example, it might be, uh, I, I had, I've literally had this question, you and I, we currently now work for Apple um, and we're making a iPod and it needs to have a shuffle, shuffle function. How would you best shuffle the songs so that no song comes back up more than once? Um, I gave my, you know, sort of first thought at it. Um, he said, yeah, that's okay, but could we do this? And it was kind of a process of, uh, you know, sort of each of us going back and forth, forth and uh, thinking through how to do it. So really they want to know your problem solving skills. So if you are giving a, a problem, don't think of it in your head, think out loud. So you'll have a piece of paper, start drawing boxes, start saying about things because they really want to know your thought process. That's what's important, not the end answer. The end answer can be pretty much wrong and they don't really care. Um, they, they want to know your thought process. So that's a big thing. And this leads me on to probably the most important point that I have, which is take something with you to the interview. So I've got a collection of things here, not Coke, didn't take Coke with me into the interview. I've got a collection of things here that I took to interviews. Um, in fact, I think I've taken most all of this stuff into an interview at one point just to show what I have. And this is really important because if it's a project that you've done, you know the ins and outs of that project, which means that you can speak about that project quite freely and you, you know all the answers about that project pretty much because you've done it, which means that you can really 
control the interview as opposed to them asking you questions that you've got no idea about because let's face it most of the time they're about something you've never sort of thought about before so if you can take something with you like uh, this is a university project that I did it's a uh, bot converter and it's got a quite a lot of things on there you can see so I've obviously had to design this I've had I've, I've had to choose components I've had to do the PCB layout I've had to think about the layout um, you can see I've got you know that guy stuck on the bottom there that was obviously an afterthought because everything else is on the top side so why is that like that they'll probably ask you that why is this like this what problem did you face and how did you fix it that's probably the biggest thing like um, they're not necessarily interested in how well like this works rather what problems did I find and how did I fix them because that's going to be your job as an engineer you will have problems and you will need to fix them and you will need to fix them on time okay so that's really why taking projects with you are important so note down before you go what issues did I have with this how did I fix them because that's important which leads me on to your logbook so every engineer has a logbook you need to make sure you take yours with you um, and show it off so mine's sort of from several years ago now it's kind of you know it's lost its its binder and everything so it's a bit tatty but the the underlying uh, reason is still there to take it with you you've documented your work because you will have to do this again in your job. You will have to show, you know, these are some waveforms that I had. I don't know if you can see that. Um, or, you know, these are some circuit diagrams that I drew and stuff like that. You need to be able to document your work as you go along. So it has to have, you know, really ideally coffee stains, scribbles, and God knows what on it because it's a, it's a record of what work you've been doing. And really that's gold mine. That's really what they want. If you can hand that to them, you know, that's going to waste... 10 minutes of the interview as they flip through it and ask you some questions, ask you some questions on this. And what you find up happening, what, what ends up happening is you've, you've controlled the interview. You've taken something with you that you feel confident about explaining and speaking about. Uh, they can ask you some questions, you know, and the whole process by the end of it is, is consumed by your projects. They don't have the time to ask you their questions. And that really is sort of the best way I've found to, to succeed at an engineering interview. So that's all I've got for today, just those few points. If you've got any comments, questions, um, or you'd like to know any more tips, or you have any more tips, drop them in the comment section down below. Uh, make sure you like the video if it's any good, and uh, feel free to subscribe and to share this on with your friends.